I reviewed the Chinese version of the Oppo Find X2 Pro when it first released earlier this year and fell head over heels for it in terms of top end specs, an incredible camera system, an immersive QHD plus 120Hz curved AMOLED display and a gorgeous different vegan leather back. However, what usually keeps me coming back for more is software and while Oppo's ColorOS 7 was a welcomed improvement, I felt like something was still missing. A few months down the line and Oppo have decided to send me the global version of the phone in order to test out their newly refined ColorOS 11 software based on Android 11 R. And oh boy, is it breathtaking. Oppo have worked closer than ever with Google to provide a stock Android experience while still enhancing its software with extremely useful personalizations. Oppo may have provided me with the device, but I can assure you that they have no copy approval rights to this video whatsoever. Everything that I will be saying is 100% by choice. Oppo is among the first OEMs to upgrade to Android 11, and I'm extremely excited to share all the new features ColorOS has to offer. This is Technic, and without further ado, let's go! Of course we have Color OS based on Android 11, that is the most important thing right now, and Android 11 is labeled R, which stands for Red Velvet Cake. Now if you'd like to try out the new software, the trial version will become available within the gear icon of your software update screen. Though not available at the current moment for all devices, they will be doing batch by batch releases in terms of the beta and the official version will come in the coming weeks. The actual phone, just as an oversight over here, feels absolutely stunning with the new Color OS 11 software. More fluid than it has ever felt before and Oppo's new slogan, make life flow really does come to light when you start flicking around the phone. Of course, in order to navigate throughout the device, we need to use a form of gestures. For this case, we're just gonna be sticking with the virtual buttons at the bottom of the screen in order to showcase the software over here. When you pinch in on your home screen, you get welcome to a nice little bubble tray at the bottom of your device instead of it taking up most of the screen. This makes for a nice user interface experience when jumping to something such as widgets or flicking between transition so that you can actually see what's going on on your screen at the current moment. And things are just made simpler, cleaner, and like I said at the start of the video, more stock Android-like. Jump into settings and you can get straight into the personalizations tab menu, which is completely new to ColorOS, where we can tweak pretty much everything on your phone, including colors, icon shapes, live wallpapers, so on and so forth. And we're gonna touch on all of them. Of course, we have live wallpapers and static wallpapers, but more importantly, Oppo has decided to work with Beauty of Science, where they will be sharing a variety of choices of different wallpapers including time-lapse pictures and if you jump into gallery to set a standard wallpaper as your wallpaper above where it says set as is a little icon clicking that allows you to create your own wallpaper while an absolutely amazing idea the wallpaper suggestions that they give you for selecting your own personalized one is pretty much the same suggestions with a different color scheme on every single wallpaper that you choose this is a really great idea I hope to see some improvements to this going forward. And if you want to share your wallpaper, we now have nearby share to tear to any Android phone around. We can also customize our icons over here and it's not just rounded corners, but we can also change the foreground and background of third party applications too. It looks really great. We can also switch to app layout where we can quickly change the columns and rows though the max is six up and five across. We can also customize the font. We can make it really, really big. So for those of you who wear glasses, this will be easier. And for those of you who have 2020 vision can go ridiculously small. We also have different options for the notification drawer where we can customize this as well. There are a ton of customization possibilities over here guys, and I'm sure Oppo are gonna be adding more going forward. We can also change the color scheme that we have. And like we've seen on Oxygen OS with the OnePlus devices, Oppo are taking it to another level, though still by the same parent company, BBK Electronics, you can see that they're both moving in the same direction. Of course, we have an always on display over here and they have some pretty great options. And with every option comes customizations. Like I said, this phone is littered with customizing things and the bulk of the phone on top of the stock Android experience is actually useful this time around. So we can go ahead and create something called a custom pattern for an always on display. So this time you have all the freedom that you want within your always on display unlike creating your own wallpaper 
to really make it shine. And honestly, you feel like you've achieved something once you've done it. And when you take a look down a glance at your phone and you see your always on display, you know that you made that. Yes, you're kind of just moving your finger in one direction in order to create it. And it doesn't really take much of a muchness to get done, but it still feels great. Nonetheless, it's these little touches that make the phone truly worth it. We have a couple fingerprint animations, nothing really new over here, and it's still lacking a no fingerprint animation option. We also have edge lighting over here. So when you get a phone call or a notification, you can change one color to a phone call and one color to a notification. So you know if you're getting a call or a message coming through, which is pretty great. I don't personally find it useful. What I do find useful though is dark mode because we have enhanced medium and gentle settings over here. For the first time I've ever seen in a smartphone, you can actually decide how dark your dark mode truly is. And of course, with Color OS, we can enable it in other apps, though it doesn't look like there is much variety in terms of other apps. When you say turn on all, you can use an app that wasn't mentioned there, such as Instagram, and it does indeed go dark, as well as Facebook, and they actually work really well. And of course, we can also use dark mode within all system apps as well. And the last thing that we need to touch on is the ringtone maker, though very simple, very very enjoyable. It's not exactly a creative experience, but you can mess around with it and once you get the hang of it, it sounds pretty decent. And then after that, of course, we can generate what we just created and we can set it as our own personalized ringtone, which is awesome. Now, if you head over to the notifications menu, you can set something called a consecutive notification tone, which means that if you get say five messages all coming at the same time, it will then take those five message notification sounds and string them together for a bit of a beat. Have a listen. We also have something called Oppo Relax for those stressful times. There are a load of different sounds that you hear in your everyday life that you can throw into the mix. And yes, you can use it in the background. We also have something called Explore, where you can explore natural sounds coming from specific cities. Though there's a limited scope of cities that you can listen to, it's still pretty interesting. And of course, when you are super stressed, you would like to unwind. And yes, you even have an assistant to help you breathe. Now, because this is a system app, we can actually use Dolby Atmos within the Oppo Relax app. Now, those are some pretty cool features, but what is seriously important to me is being able to translate your entire screen by using Google Lens. Oppo and Google are officially closer than ever with so much Google integration going on here. I personally live in Shanghai in China and being able to translate anything that I can see on screen is a big deal to someone like me. And you can use a three finger screenshot in order to translate just a portion of it and then paste it into your Google Chrome. If you are a lover of something such as Google Home, you'll be happy to know that it's just one touch away in order to manage your controls. So all your smart home devices are just one click away. You also have chats with friends that appear as bubbles above all other notifications. It pretty much works as Facebook chat heads for any text app available. And we also have app lock where you can 
can pretty much lock every single app. And then you have to verify using biometrics in order to get into that specific app. Privacy is key. And speaking about privacy, we have something called a private system, though only available in November 2020, you could literally live a double life having two completely separate systems from one another in terms of data and applications. Of course, we have the standard permissions manager, but Oppo have upped the game. If you don't use an app for a long time, permissions will automatically reset in order to keep your data safe. And you can also personally decide which storage folder individual apps have access to. With the help of FlexDrop, we can actually use a small or mini window in order to better mainstream your multitasking use scenarios. Oppo promises an even smoother experience on current generation devices with Color OS 11 by improving RAM utilization by 45%, frame rate stability by 17%, response rate has now improved by 32%, and artificial intelligent app preloading reduces load times. So it's time to sit back, relax, and let our current smartphones improve performance. Yes, we can also game on these great phones and we can plug them into competition mode using the wonderful game space. And we can use the game assistance as well in order to open up things such as WhatsApp in order to text our friends while gaming. We can also see a couple things on the screen such as the FPS counter. Unfortunately, you cannot route this straight into the screen while you're playing. You have to do a little swipe in in order to see your FPS. These features are things you only really get in gaming phones. Hyperboost 3.0 is also a new thing. It means that you will get a 12% improvement in battery life while CPU will be utilized by up to 30% more. And the best thing about all of it is that there is no performance impact whatsoever. There is also a new super power saving mode and Oppo have said that under test conditions, they managed to get an hour and a half of messaging time on WhatsApp with just 5% of battery left. You're restricted to just six apps open at the same time, but it's still a fantastic thing. We also have something called low battery battery message. So when your phone drops below 15%, you can decide on which users will automatically get sent your location so that they know where you are in case your phone dies. Unfortunately, this awesome new feature is only available in India. Many people are complaining that fast charging degrades your battery over time. Well, Oppo now have something called optimized night charging, where it pretty much stops charging at 80% and then just does the last 20% just before you wake up. Now we don't have any improvements to the camera camera user interface, but we do have improvements in third-party apps utilizing the Oppo's incredible camera system. We can now use ultra steady mode in third-party applications should developers actually decide to go for it, as well as ultra wide mode in terms of video and pictures. And we also have HDR mode as well that you can use in third-party applications. But once again, this is dependent by developers and all of these features are automatically enabled. You cannot turn them off or on. So if the Oppo thinks that in a third-party app, you need to use the ultra wide camera, then you're gonna be using it. Color OS 11 truly does make your life flow. And I say that in the best of ways. The experience is fluid and fancy but at the same time removes a whole bunch of things that you don't necessarily need in your phone. It takes all the clutter away, providing you with an almost stock Android experience closer than I've ever seen on an Oppo device. ColorOS 11 is truly stock Android with some seriously enhanced personalization options that you need to have on your smartphone.